Hello, I'm Mandara Cromwell. As the inventor of the AMI 750 and a longtime researcher of the efficacy of sound as a healing modality, I became extremely interested in the effect that focused frequency could have on live blood cells. I wanted to be able to view this process with the technique called live cell microscopy. Those who work with this approach, looking at the live cells as opposed to a dried sample under the microscope, conclude that it is a direct, immediate information source about your health. While this technique is considered controversial by some, it allows for the observation of cell processes in real time and can, in some cases, provide more reliable and relevant information than fixed cell microscopy. It is interesting to note that living cells are translucent and must be stained to be visible under a traditional microscope. Unfortunately, the process of staining cells kills them. With the invention of a phase contrast microscope, it became possible to observe unstained living cells in great detail. This discovery made the observation of cells under the influence of focused frequencies generated by the AMI 750 device possible for me to view in a laboratory setting. I wanted to study cells in a variety of interactions and be able to observe their internal structures while watching them actively doing their known functions in real time. Viewing cell structures and their dynamic purposes was helpful for me as it allowed me to more fully understand what happens when we stimulate them with frequencies in the form of therapeutic sound. I wanted the first study to include observations of what could happen when we introduced our five frequency combination called Vital Life Force to a live blood sample. Sima Technologies Sound Education Director Kate Holland visited a lab and volunteered to be the subject as she was fascinated with the prospect of the effect that cymotherapy could have on her blood cells. This required her to have an initial sample to determine the baseline health of her blood cells before taking the post-sound application samples. This was a necessary step to help determine exactly what response her cells were having to the specific frequencies. We viewed the first sample taken by a professionally trained lab technician drawn before any sound was administered to her body. This tiny drop of blood allowed us to look at literally thousands of her blood cells. Kate and I were also able to observe what the technician was seeing under the microscope on the computer screen in front of us in real time. The technician shared the following remarks. These pictures are from the before sound sample showing healthy blood cells with no abnormalities and sufficient amounts of oxygen. When red blood cells are not clumping, it means that the subject is hydrated. We are witnessing the white blood cells doing their assigned jobs of cleaning the cell environment and keeping the blood flowing. There were no traces of animal proteins, which made sense, as Kate is a vegetarian. It may not have been anticipated that she would have healthy red blood cells due to this specific diet. Here was our plan for the investigative research. We wanted to observe the behavior of healthy red blood cells when the specific frequencies of the vital life force code were applied during live cell microscopy. Our hypothesis. If we apply the vital life force code to the live red blood cells, 
then we will observe an increase in their vitality. The first step, sound is applied transdermally to the subject. The vital life force code generated by the AMI 750 was first administered to Kate's body for five minutes. Kate and the sound device were approximately six feet away from the microscope and the live blood sample. The belief is that even though the sample is taken out of the body, it still maintains its innate intelligence for the time it is alive. However, once the blood has been taken from the body, it has a limited time to be alive and begins to respond to changes in the environment, such as pH balance, a lack of oxygen, hydrostatic pressure, and lack of moisture. The observation of the technician while looking through the microscope, as well as the response of Kate and myself watching the computer screen, was that the cells continued their usual movement patterns and their innate functions. There was no apparent response to the sound. The second step. Sound is applied directly to the live blood sample. Kate provided a second blood sample. The AMI 750 generating the vital life force frequency was set up near the microscope in close proximity to the new live blood cell sample. After five minutes, the cells maintained their usual function with no new or unusual response observed. The third step, our observation. We waited for approximately 15 minutes and then the technician took another sample. There was no sound source near the microscope nor being administered to Kate's body at this time. The observations are recorded in the following video. Please note that this clip will be accompanied by the technician's closing remarks. It was made with the cell phone camera and not taken directly from the microscope. When blood cells are in groupings, they don't usually exhibit random movement patterns or changes in direction. In general, the red blood cells do not move of their own accord, rather they flow. Both red and white blood cells had a dramatic increase in movement and visible healthful vitality. There was a change in the shape and shade of the cells, which seemed almost opaque, with much brighter halo effects around the outer edges of each cell. From our own subjective observances in real time, the results were amazing. It seemed that the movement of the red blood cells had increased dramatically, as if they were following the sound source. Our theory is that the sound of vital life force had activated all the cellular players. It is important to note that cymotherapy protocols are generally 30-minute sessions comprised of multiple codes and specific patterning. In this experiment, we used only one code, comprised of five frequencies for approximately 15 minutes. Our closing statement. With the information gathered in this preliminary investigation, we at Cyma Technologies believe that there is more than adequate evidence to support a continuation of our research on the many applications of therapeutic sound using live cell microscopy. It is an excellent tool for observing cell behavior in a sound environment created by the frequencies found in the acoustic meridian intelligence devices. In the words of the late Harvey Biggleson, MD, 
It is important to note that live cell microscopy can give a unique look into each person. No two people are exactly alike and no two blood samples are. What is equally as fascinating is that if your blood is tested even hours later or the next day, it could look completely different. This is because the body is dynamic and responds to both the daily and lifelong influences that each of us encounter. I believe the use of focused sound protocols several times each week could change your health trajectory to a more positive track and could become an important part of the medicine of the future. With the codes found in the AMI 750 device, we have the sound which is instrumental in helping the cells to remember their original healthy song. This is a recognition of the vital life force inherent in us all. With one single code, we were able to stimulate the most important carrier of life force to the body, the blood, to display its function with a more visible vitality. Vital life force is just one of the many health-giving frequencies available in the AMI 750 device. In the words of Kate Holland, being able to watch my own blood cells live and at work was truly a remarkable experience. It was a beautiful reminder of the miracle of the workings of the human body. The cells themselves have a consciousness and intelligence that is hard for us to comprehend. But when I witnessed it, I was amazed. For more information on the AMI 750 and other sound science discoveries, visit our website at cymatechnologies.com.